Hello there, boys and girls. Welcome to lesson 6.1 called Equivalent Fractions. Our essential question is how can you use models to show equivalent fractions? We will be discovering fractions using models and seeing how they are equivalent to one another. Please write this essential question down in your notes. How can you use models to show equivalent fractions? So let's take a look at our first example. Our question says, Joe cut a pan of brownies into third size equal pieces. He kept one third and gave the rest away. Joe will not eat his part all at once. How can he cut his part into smaller equal size pieces? So we know that he has one third kept for himself. This is the part that I have shaded brown in my model. He's going to give the rest away. He will not eat his part all at once. He wants to cut his part into smaller equal size pieces. So we see that the brown part that's left over is his portion. If I want to cut it into smaller equal size pieces, I know I can cut it in half. This is what he has left over. Now I know that he had one third of the whole pan. I just cut that one third into half. But remember with fractions, they must have all equal sizes. Therefore, my denominator must have all equal same parts. So now I can say that he doesn't just have one third, he also has two six. I call this two six because two parts out of six parts are shaded in. Therefore, two six is equivalent to one third. My next question says, what if Joe wanted to cut his part of the brownie into four equal size pizzas? What fraction of the pan is four pieces? Now remember, we're talking about his part, and we know this portion right here is his part. And it says we want to cut it into four equal size pieces. So I'm going to take his portion and I'm going to cut it into fourths. The best way for me to cut it into fourths is to first try my best to cut it in half and then cut each of those halves in half. There you can see that his portion has four parts. Now remember with fractions, all parts of the whole must be equal. Therefore, I'm going to continue this model to show that he still has four equal parts out of his original one-third and we can say that his fraction would be four parts out of a total of 12 parts because I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. My denominator is 12. That's how many equal parts are there. Four is what's shaded in and that's the amount that Joe has. So we could say that one third is the same value as four twelfths. Fractions that name the same amount are called equivalent fractions. Do you see this word right here, equivalent? I can hear the word equal inside of the word equivalent. That lets me know that equivalent fractions means that they're equal to one another. They have the same value. So I want to write the equivalent fractions for the two models we just discussed. I could say one-third has the same value as two-sixths. It also has the same value as four-twelfths. Can you still see that one-third shaded originally from both of those fractions? If you look closely, you can still see that I still have one part out of three parts still shaded in because it still has the value of one-third, but it also has a value as two-sixths as well as four-twelfths. This is called equivalent fractions. So, does one-third equal three-ninths? I'm going to have you pause this video and think about it. When you're ready, press unpause. When you stop to think about this, I originally see my one-third in my model. But I also know that I could divide this model into nine equal parts. So let's go ahead and look. If I take this and make nine parts by making two horizontal lines, 
I can see that I have nine equal parts. Do you see three of the nine parts shaded in? Absolutely, because one third has the same value as three ninths. Now tomorrow in class we'll be learning that we'll be doing whatever you multiply your denominator by, you can multiply your numerator by, and it shows an equivalent fraction. That's just a sneak peek of what we'll be doing tomorrow. But as you can see with our model, my model shows one third does equal three ninths. So let's read this next question. It says, Holly has two fourths yards of ribbon and Janet has three eighths yard of ribbon. How can you determine whether Holly or Janet have the same length of ribbon? The equal sign and not equal sign, we'll make a line like that through this part, shows whether fractions are equivalent. So if they're equal, it looks like this. If it's not equal, you make a slash through your equal sign. So we will show whether the fractions are equivalent or not. So what I can do is I can use fraction bars. I can shade in two-fourths of this fraction bar, and that shows two-fourths. Now, if I cut these fourths into eighths, which is just cutting each of my fourths in halves to have eight equal parts, and if I shade in three-eighths for Janet, can you see, based on my fraction bars, who has the greater amount? I can see that it looks to me like Holly, that has two fourths yards of a ribbon, has a little bit bigger of a ribbon than Janet. Hers is a little larger. And if you look, you can see because Janet's would go about right to there. And Holly's is a little bit farther. So I could say that Holly and Janet their ribbons are not equal. So right between these two, I'll make that slash mark. It's not equal. So here's what I want you to do now. I want you to draw this model in your notes, and then we're going to write an equivalent fraction for it. Will you please make a rectangle and divide it into fifths and shade in the first part? Do that twice. Underneath the first rectangle, I want you to write one fifth. If you need to pause this video to draw this, go ahead. After you've drawn it, press unpause. So now what I want you to do is I want you to see that you can draw a horizontal line directly down the middle of our second model. Do as best as you can to make them equal parts. And then I want you to see what fraction do you see that's shaded in. I could see that out of 10 parts, and the reason why I say 10 parts is because if you count them up, I could see I have 10 equal parts. I can see I have two of those 10 parts shaded in. That's because 1 fifth is equal to 2 tenths. Remember how I told you about a sneak peek of what we're doing tomorrow in class? Whatever you multiply your numerator by, your denominator by, you can multiply your numerator by. 5 times 2 is 10, 1 times 2 is 2, so 1 fifth is equivalent to 2 tenths. So let's do the same thing with this model. Please draw this model in your notes and then write an equivalent fraction. I want you to try this one on your own before you press on pause to see what I did. Now, you could have done just one line directly down the middle and call it 2, 6, because 2 out of 6 parts are shaded in. That's one way you could have done it. Or you might have done a couple other ways. You might have drawn two vertical lines, and you can see that 3 out of 9 parts is shaded in. That 2 is equivalent to 1 third, because the same value is still shaded in. Or maybe you didn't want to make two vertical lines, but maybe you wanted to make three vertical lines. So I'm going to make one down the middle there, and one on each side of that. And maybe you have four parts out of twelve parts shaded in. That's because one-third is equivalent to four-twelfths. Or maybe you just went crazy with it, and maybe you wanted to make four vertical lines going down. Do you see how, as long as you keep your parts as equivalent, or as equal as possible, all of these are equivalent to one third. So I made one, two, three, four, five, six, twelve, eighteen. I made eighteen equal parts, 
and I have 6 shaded. 6 eighteenths is the same value as 1 third because they're both equivalent. Remember that little sneak peek I'm going to show you for tomorrow. 3 times 6 is 18. 1 times 6 is 18. Therefore, 1 third is equivalent to 6 eighteenths. So here are your two homework questions for tonight. I want you to write two other equivalent fractions for one half. Draw the one half model and draw, draw it two more times, but this time I want you to create equivalent fractions, just like we practiced. And then question number two is a park test prep question. It says what fraction is equivalent to three fifths? Could it be six eighths, five thirds, five tenths, or six tenths? You may have to draw models to figure that out. And then when you're done with this, I want you to assess yourself. Remember, if you feel like you're level one, it means that you're a novice. You're just starting to learn this and you don't really understand equivalent fractions. If you feel like you're a novice, I do want you to re-watch this video. Level two is apprentice. It says I'm starting to get it, but I still need coaching. Practitioner is level three. You can already do this by yourself, but you might get stuck sometimes and level four is an expert. You really understand this well that you could teach it to someone. And here are your two questions again. Go ahead and work on these and tomorrow in class we're, we're going to be talking about equivalent fractions and doing many fun activities to get better at understanding models with equivalent fractions. Have a great night.